Good day, everybody. Today is a new day, kinda. I'm already halfway through it, but I wanna play a game today. Today is, would you buy this house or would you not? As home inspectors, we get asked this question all the time and my answer is always the same. You know, my tolerances are different than your tolerances. It matters if these home problems are within your tolerances. So I'm actually kind of curious if in the comment section how this works out, would you buy it or would you not? And you'll see the tolerances across the community is different for everybody. So let's go check it out. Okay, I'm gonna start by assessing how I would look at it whenever I first walk up to a property. So the first thing I notice is, you know, you got brand new fiber cement all the way across, which is a good sign, but you do have heavy foliage. This is something that you're gonna be like, all right, well, I'm downtown Houston, heavy foliage, probably gonna might have termite issues. But also, whenever you look down the line here, let's see the, the board line. Oh, well, you can't really see it. But let's step back over here. You have a very large deflection crack in the, the hardy. And then if you step back, you can see a dip in the roof line right here. So first sign that you have foundation issues. Coming to the other corner, I'm gonna look around the home. And uh, uh, you can see that this condenser is not lifted, which is pretty minor. You want it three inches from grade I need to look up to see if it's allowed to sit on concrete it might but I think it's three inches off of the grade um, you have wire out of conduit so it needs some conduit you have holes penetrations that need to be sealed you have wood to ground contact to another area that can hide the termites in the property and this actually restricts the ventilation to the crawl space of your service entrance wires it's recommended to remove the trees from the service entrance wires it is the proper height off of it uh, so you have rotted wood in the back sagging uh, this is probably evidence from the older roof there is a newer roof in place which is nice back door back door is rotted out at the base so the door frame probably needs to be replaced on this door and then if you kind of look at it you can see from the foundation issues it's actually sagging outwards. There's a there's a bow in this door. I'm gonna do my best to film this, but you do have wood rot, right? And these these uh, wood trims, dry wood termites like to live in the wood trims. And I'm gonna try my best to hold the camera and get this, but you can knock on the wood and you get this frass. So what you need to do is hold your hand out. Let's see if I can get this. You knock on the wood and you take a look at the frass here and you can see that this is evidence of dry wood termite frass. So it's a pretty cool find on this property. You know, wood trim rotted in the back, needs to be replaced. And then looking around, you can see they've done work on the, uh, the cast iron drain lines. So we have PVC in place. You have PVC in place over there, so they have rerouted the plumbing at some point in time. But something that kind of sticks out to me is you can see all the dead and missing grass. Uh, you you know that they're having trouble with the uh, soil in this area. So one of the most important things with pier and beam homes is you need proper drainage around the structure. And if you don't have proper drainage, as you can see, all this water rushes underneath the home and it causes it to move pretty significantly on pier beams because especially in Texas we have clay and sandy soils and uh, that's that stuff's no joke. You have the AC primary drain line terminating right to the ground. You want to cut this off the ground a little bit and turn it, terminate it away from the structure so uh, you do have a constant source of moisture in there. This is an easy area for termite colony to, to grow and uh, um, that's your secondary drain line. We just want to seal the penetrations up there. So another look at the drainage from a different angle. You can really see how all this rainwater is rushing underneath the, the structure and this will cause the foundation to move significantly. And you can, let's, uh, we can go inside and check it out. Oh, before we go inside, I just want to make a note for the roof. Actually, the roof didn't look too bad. It is newer to the structure. 
Uh, they just need to paint some of the flashing. They have rust on the flashing. You can see evidence of cast iron plumbing in the past. Uh, so we need to try to see if we can get underneath the home to see if all the cast iron drain lines have been replaced and they just had uh, prior repairs. It was pretty minor stuff on the roof for considering the condition of the foundation. On another note, uh, right here, this door wouldn't even open up at all because of the settlement of the foundation. And you can kind of see it's uh, it's crooked, the whole door is. So uh, we can't even pry open the door. And the soffit is starting to bow in this area too because of the foundation movement. Going into the crawl space right here, you can, you can see there's several beams leaning out of place. They're not touching, they're not shimmed right anymore, and uh, there's a lot of debris down here. So we do have definite foundation repair work needed for this property. So walking through the property, you can kind of see the dip in the floor and they foamed the gaps that are starting to show underneath the windows. You have a pretty significant deflection crack in this area. And, uh, you can see some, start to see some stress cracks in uh, these locations. You can see from this angle, let's see if I can get low. It may show up in the camera well enough, but the floor is sloped all in this area, and it actually correlates with that poor drainage on that side of the property. You can see where all the water is settling and causing these piers to sink in this area. Always have warning signs whenever you see excessive caulking in the shower area, poor grout. You pretty much can guarantee this is leaking into the crawl space and we'll ride it up as such. And I think there might be a, a little bit of microbial growth in the uh, shower, just a little. Whenever you see the green around the base of the commode, you know the wax ring is starting to leak and then give it a little bump and you can see that it's loose at the base. Easy ride up, easy find, easy repair actually too. So right here you can see uh, tape twisting. Uh, we obviously know there's evidence of foundation issues, but if you ever see tape twisting like this, that's uh, actually evidence that the uh, foundation's settling more than normal. Here's another pretty significant uh, foundation crack for you. Stress crack, deflection crack, whatever you want to call it. And then uh, you have uh, a missing sink. <laughs> All right, coming in the attic place, you can really see that they've replaced all the decking, which is nice uh, in the in the structure. So that, that is a positive. You can see they took the extra step in the roof. So that's a good sign. One thing you'll find in a lot of these older homes is uh, they cut a lot of the piers. I'm at piers, purlins, sorry. They cut a lot of purlins to put the equipment up here whenever they put the HVAC in. So that is something you want to write up to let them know. It can cause the roof to sag. The uh, next thing that sticks out to me the most is you want to keep an eye out for these por porcelain pieces. These porcelain pieces uh, are the evidence of knob and tube wiring and we actually tested to see if this wire was active or not and it is so there's evidence of knob and tube wiring still active in the property and what they were doing is taking that knob and tube wiring, let's see if I can get my laser pointer out here, so you can see right here they're splicing into the knob and tube wiring and adding like Romex in or even lower voltage wiring on the off of this and this is what causes homes to burn down. So this is a definite write up. You never want to miss this. This is pretty important. You see knob and tube wiring, spend that extra time in the attic space to try to identify it. Following item right here, you can see uh, this is the range hood exhaust vent and it's just terminating into the attic space. This does not exit the property like it should. Positives, they have a new furnace, a newer coils too as well, so they match the condenser on the outside. It is a Bryant, so it's a cheaper brand, uh, but you know, to each their own. Uh, something to keep an eye out on, the flue is not mounted properly on the water heater and it's a little bit older. You can, if I had to guess, it's about 10 years older and uh, the flue's not mounted and you can see evidence of water damage and water leaking uh, from the top down on the on the water heater. Some easy call outs too, you can see um, some of the other knob and tube wiring over there 
right here you got the knob and tube wiring and then uh, obvious uh, lower insulation just due to the age of the property and it's pretty warm up here so the ventilation I would write it up as marginal because uh, the you're not you don't really have the 50 50 going on you do have the ridge cap but it seems like the soffits are, are blocked and we're not getting proper airflow to the property so there you go answer the question would you buy this home or would you not and uh, um, for me personally this is probably outside of my tolerances but you never know uh, the client that was purchasing this one he didn't seem scared at all he was just going to take the action steps call the foundation company and get them out here to uh, see how much it costs to level it and negotiate on it so you know to each their own and that's when you should not ask your home inspector would you buy this property you should be asking yourself do these homes meet your tolerances all right so catch us on the next one and uh, please hit that like and subscribe button bye